Welcome back everyone. It's been a while and I've been really busy with designing the new product which is going to be launching pretty soon. It will solve all the lighting problems. And I just want to say thank you for all those people who are mentioning me in their comments, in their stories and sharing their artworks with me and sharing my artworks with their audience and so on. So really thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. I'm just feeling a little under the weather today. I have a cold and some fever but uh, yeah. So there's that. Let's move on. So today we are going to be creating a candy cane or you can say a Christmas candy inside of Maya and we are going to be doing a procedural shading on that as well. So yeah. So apart from this, uh, a new product is coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And I just want to say thank you for all these people who are sharing my artworks. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's get into it. So I'm going to take a simple torus and I'm going to hit E on my keyboard and I'm just going to hit G and rotate this in 90 degrees you can also check rotation x if you are not sure if it's 90 degrees or not and from here i think it's a bit too thick so i'm gonna reduce the section radius to maybe like 0.2 and i think this looks pretty good so let's go to the front view and go to face mode select the bottom face and hit delete that's it so we are using a default subdivision which is 20 by 20 and from here what we are going to do is go to the edge mode and go to perspective mode and from here select the bottom edge let me just turn off the grid double click on the edge loop and from here simply hit ctrl e you can also click on this icon or go to edit mesh and extrude and hit w and simply bring it down to somewhere about maybe about here you can always go back and change it if you don't like it and for this part we are going to do the same we are just going to extrude it just a little bit to something like this all right so that's pretty much it with the candy cane we are just going to do a small thing which is closing this hole and we are going to go to mesh and simply hit fill hole now right click on the face select face and click on the face and simply go to the bevel option this will make a nice smooth ending for our candy cane and i'm going to increase the fraction and let's increase the segment as well Let's increase the fraction as well. So yeah, there you go. Looks pretty good. We are going to do the same process with the bottom part. We are going to select the edge loop. Go to mesh, fill hole, select the face and simply hit bevel face. Increase the fraction to about 0.9 maybe. Totally depends on you. There's no like fix uh, number. But yeah. Alright, so there we go. We have a nice little candy cane. I'm just going to add some uh, edge loops around our candy cane here on this line just to give some supporting edges to our candy cane here and that's it all right so if you don't know where you can find the edge loop it's in the mesh tool insert edge loop there you go all right so i'm just gonna call this cane there you go and from here we'll jump into the shading part so let's start off by taking a simple new material which will be our stand surface and let's call this candy and make the base width 1 all right so from here i'm going to get into my hyper shade and go to the candy right click graph network and here we have our standard surface you can also see the preview we can't actually see the preview of this material in our ipr and to solve this problem all you have to do is restart these or pause and resume all right so there you go i'm going to hit pause and resume again all right so it looks pretty good now from here to shade this and i'm sure most of the people has already seen what candy cane looks like christmas candy so we need that white and red stripes so for that we are going to go into the maya and we are going to select checker all right so this will be our shading part so in the checker we have coverage translate and we have used checker for a lot of things in the past tutorials uh, this time what we are going to do is we are going to decrease the uv on the x direction and more on the y direction and uh, for the y direction instead of just four i'm going to choose a pretty heavy amount like something like 45 so he here you can see we have a lot of stripes going on instead of small ones so it totally depends on you how much bigger or smaller stripes you want so i'm going to go for this and uh, instead of attaching this to the base color we'll get this black and white we have to attach it to a different node which will be our ramp to give a nice color to this so i'm going to select my rgb ramp attach the color to the input 
there you go and output to the out color base color so i'm gonna disconnect this just for now and from here i'm just gonna instead of like using the v direction or the u direction we are going to use a custom so when the custom uh, you click on the custom you'll see you get those black and white stripes again so we are going to instead of black we are going to use a red color and we are going to keep it white but you'll notice that we get this nice linear uh, fall off which we do not want so I'm gonna hit none to this and none to this as well even though this is a completely none interpolation we'll still get this nice striped but in a much sharper way all right so I'm gonna attach this to the base color and there you go so we have nice little base color going on so I'm gonna just uh, go to the Unl IPR and turn this on and before getting into it I'm just gonna go back to my image size and change the size to 1k there you go let's also take a simple camera let me just close this create a camera and bring this back and let's turn on the film gate go to the channel box select your camera and see what kind of look you want all right so i think uh, i'm gonna go for 100 and lock the camera the reason i'm taking such a far angle camera because we are going to be multiplying this object with a lot of clones so let's see a closer what we have uh, let's take a simple directional light and scale this rotate this to something like this and yeah there you go so from here you'll notice we have something like this not exactly what we were going for and i'm gonna change this to something like this all right so one more thing i'm going to do is quickly increase the exposure amount and some samples on this all right so from here i'm going to go to the uv and i'm going to select a cylindrical mapping all right i'm going to make the horizontal sweep to about 360 angle so there you go and i'm going to keep the projection height to the default value all right so that solves one problem we are getting the stripe but usually on the candy keen the stripes are on a bit rotate not such a linear way so what we are going to do is we are going to get into our candy keen color again and in the checker you'll notice let me just close this go to the hyper sheet and uh, yeah the 2d texture we get this parameters called uv uh, sorry rotate uv there you go so we can either we can use this or we can also use this one as well i'm just going to quickly disconnect the rgb ramp here so just so we can notice how the checker is working i'm going to reduce the amount of uv as well to four all right so this is what we have i'm going to rotate this and uh, you won't see much of the thing happening but if i click on the stagger uh, let me just add some more for this yeah so what stagger is basically doing is instead of a uniform pattern the stagger is using the alternate pattern which you'll notice here so what i'm going to do is zero this out again and i'm gonna rotate this to something like let's go for something like maybe 72 so instead of positive direction we can also go into the negative direction all right maybe like 75 seems good all right so there you go so make sure you you are using staggered and just hit some rotation to give a nice rotation to your candy cane stripes that's it so yeah there you go now you can see how this the whole rotation thing is working now if you go back to the ipr now you'll see we have something like this a pretty big pattern going on and the reason is because we have uh sorry we have a pretty big amount of uvs here so i'm gonna go for something like 45 all right so now we have some other issue going on and the issue is you can see the whole swirling thing going on all right so to solve this now i'm gonna just keep rotating this until i get a decent amount of result all right so after playing a lot of uh here and there and a lot of rotation i finally come up with this and all you have to do is simply you can go to the color and in the checker you can use any type of rotation and from here you can see you can get this nice rotation going on and uh, i'm going to keep it to somewhere like about 22 i guess something like this maybe like 
five yeah this looks good and if this is not working for you or the best method is you can simply go to the uv and use a camera based uv from the front angle and this way you'll get a nice uv for the overall candy cane you'll get this kind of <coughs> excuse me this kind of look going on all right so the candy cane looks good i'm gonna just add some bit more details so i'm gonna get into my perspective let's get a nice close of view here let's go to the perspective again and from here i'm gonna actually reduce the roughness to one and let's add a bit more code right and from here i'm just gonna add some hdr for the lighting purpose you can find tons of hdr online all right so i've loaded in a new hdr and uh, let's see how we can work with this so just to add a bit more depth to this i'm gonna use a simple noise map to generate some bumpiness on the candy cane to add some imperfection on top of it so let's go to Arnold and AI noise and from here what you can do is you can increase some octaves some amplitude to somewhere about maybe five and decrease the scale amount to something like four four and four because so i'm going to attach this to the base color to just to check out how the overall uh, candy cane is how the overall UV mapping is happening on top of this cane here. Alright, so there you go. I think uh, this amount of noise is good enough. It looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is quickly attach this to a base color and for the noise, uh, let me just bring this out here. Let's go to the bump, bump 2D. Uh, attach this to the bump, sorry. Open this up, attach this and attach this to the normal camera there you go but right, so here you can see how the overall noise is working how the bump map is working and i think uh, the overall bump map is a bit too much or a bit too strong on this so i'm going to reduce this to maybe like 0 0.0 maybe 5 maybe like 2 and you can also use something similar to this you can also use this as your roughness channel specular roughness and i'm going to decrease the amount of white in this just so it's not that strong okay i think it looks pretty good you can get some shininess and some roughness at the same time if you make this a complete strong, you'll get something like this. Which is not that bad actually. It looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to keep it like this. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is create a nice backdrop or a simple plane for this. Let's increase the size of this plane. Hit G, rotate this, bring this back. And I'm just going to lower the subdivision amount. to Something like this, okay. The next thing we are going to do is select this candy cane, make sure it's in the pivot and from here I'm going to hit mash and in the mash go to attributes, mash repo, make sure you are using your GPU and in the mash distribute which is a distribute node which you get by default instead of using linear you can use something like a radial or maybe a grid so I'm going to go for grid by using grid you get something like this. 3, 3, 3 clones on the XYZ, well, one on the Y direction, but I'm going to make this 2. And from here, uh, we are going to make some changes to this. So I'm going to add another node, which will be a random node. All right. Now, instantly, you see our plane, our canes actually get randomized. So let's increase some randomness on top of this. So I'm adding some more Z depth into this. I'm going to make this 20. Let's keep increasing this. Let's go to our camera and from here let's increase some rotation to something like this and we can also use a little bit of scale value just to add some variation and I think a bit more Z value actually we have to bring the plane a little backwards as well alright so there you go so from here, if you're not satisfied, satisfied with the overall result, what you can do is simply go to the random and change the seed to see how the overall candy canes are reacting to this. So I think we have to add a bit more on the X direction, a bit more on the Y direction as well. So let's increase. Okay, so I think uh, this one looks pretty good. 
I'm going to go back to the outline and select my original cane and from here you can go to cane and turn on the visibility and from here you can select the cane just scale this up mm. actually I guess we have to duplicate this control D since this is linked with the overall mesh so I'm going to select this guy here bring it to the center rotate this to something like this maybe a bit more cinematic and make sure it's not getting in the way with any other candy cane all right because this is our main subject right, so this looks pretty good I'm just gonna add a locator to this location just so we can add a depth of field but let's look at the overall candy cane render here before getting further with this so I'm gonna go to the camera shape and we have something like this looks pretty good for the backdrop I'm gonna add a new material which will be a simple sand surface let's call this BG and let's add a bit more dark material to this to something like this alright no speckle on this ok this looks good yeah, something like this alright so I'm gonna close this and let's add a new locator go to perspective view scale the locator up and to about right there I think right there the focus will be pretty good somewhere around here alright so from here I'm gonna get into my camera from the camera you can go into the IPR bring this up and select your camera and go to the camera shape close all of this go to Arnold and here you'll get enable depth of field so I'm gonna copy this tab just so we can bring this out and in the Arnold I'm gonna check enable depth of field and if I increase the focus distance uh, you won't see much happening let me just increase the aperture size so this is the depth of field happening but we don't have the exact focus point so for that what we are going to use is the locator and here you will see distance from camera that's 103 by 153 so I'm gonna put the same value here focus distance to 103 153 and there you go let me just add a point here All right so there you go now you can see we get a perfect depth of field I'm gonna make that purchase size to 0.6 maybe uh, by the way, if you don't, if you're not getting this uh, UI, the overall distance from camera, all you have to do is go to display and heads up display and I think it's called the object details. I'm not sure but it's one of object details or polygon or something. Alright, so we have nice little candy cane scene going on. One more thing I'm going to add is a bit more clones into this scene just to make it a bit more dramatic. I'm gonna add four and four and in the random let's add a bit more of these and let's all right so this looks good I'm gonna add maybe a bit more in the Z depth all right let's see how this is looking okay Alright, so this looks pretty good to me. If you want, you can scale this up if you want. And uh, I think the overall HDR is a bit too bright here. So I'm going to go back here and maybe intensity 2.8. Uh, sorry, 0.8, maybe 0.6. Alright, so there you go. I think this looks pretty good. So that's it for this one. We have nice little details going on. Let me just uh, res up. The whole resolution to something like a 2k and for the sampling i'm using the gpu version of un so what we have is a universal sampling so i'm gonna keep it to somewhere about 30 uh, since this is a single image it won't take that long and we get nice little details we have nice little depth of field going on pretty amazing shading going on you can always go back change the color if you don't like it so pretty amazing have fun with this have fun with this idea create something of your own share with me on my instagram and i love to see your work and that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video